Well, the, the next question is very important because he, he said that, you know, that Quran is uh, the work of God because it does not fit into the rhyming scheme. That was his logic. 16 rhyming schemes, I'm a student of literature as well. Uh, 16 rhyming schemes, since it does not fit into that, so it's defined. The question is, there are millions of languages around this earth. There are thousands of tribal languages. They do not expose to any particular uh, form of literature. They do not agree with any of themselves. Some of them do not even have verbs, you know, these sort of languages. Basic languages, uh, tribal languages, they have found how they, they could not even uh, express time. For example, he worked, he worked, he worked in their language. They do not follow any substantial structure. So are they dividing themselves as well? And any word of thing who does not agree with any particular scheme is divine. Is that true? Uh, agreeing with your principle? OK, it's a very good question. I'm going to start with the last one. First and foremost, I didn't say the Quran doesn't not only agree with the rhyming scheme. What I said was the reality of the Arabic language is that every time you express yourself as a human being, the source text producer, the person who produces text or an oral tradition or orality, whatever the case may be, does so and always fulfill, it always fills itself or can be categorized in prose which could be subcategorized into mursal, straightforward speech, or saja, rhyme prose. Significantly, there's another form, literary form, called poetry, which, according to the poetic patterns, you have the al-bihar. That's the reality of Arabic language, every time. So if you may use observation and experience, every time you speak, is either normal speech, rhyme prose, or poetry, every time. The Quran doesn't fit into any of these known forms. That's my point. My point is this, the miraculous nature of the Quran is miraculous due to the fact that when we exhaust the reality of the Arabic language, 28 letters, finite grammatical rules and words, we exhaust it, and we can't, we can't produce the form of the Quran. It's still for, it's still, that, that if we do anything, it still falls into the category of prose and rhyme prose or poetry. That itself requires the question. That categorization as prose, prose, uh, prose poetry, and all, all that stuff, is done just for conventions. Is done by those people who agree that these agree that these things happen so much spontaneously that they should be branched as such thing. What my premise was that you know that that sort of thing that a new literary form has been created. Yes. The Quran has been said throughout history. It was the first written prosaic form of uh, written um, um, essay form, I, I, prose and poetry, prose form of Arabic. Before that, there was no prose form. Before that, even the, the literary uh, things were poets, and uh, the, their poems, poems used to be hung in, in the Holy Kaaba. Yes. That was their literary form. Yes. The, the bookish form, the first book of Arabic language is Holy Quran. Okay. So my premise is that a different form of language, a different form of speaking, does not mean it's divine. For example, uh, how could Hebrew be divine then? How Sorry? would Hebrew, Hebrew mm -hmm. be divine then? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and the other thing would be that... Um, <laughs> I think... Uh, wait, 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 uh, wait, wait you, uh, you mischaracterized the argument. Let me give an example. We're saying the whole, the whole uniqueness of the form is based upon the challenge to try and reproduce the form. And let me give an example. We can reproduce poetry with the al-bihar, with the rhythmical patterns. We can reproduce rhyme prose. It ends with a rhyme. It has an accent based with a pattern. It has a concentrated use of rhetorical devices. We could reproduce these things. The point I'm just saying, you can't reproduce the Quran. And, in, and what you're saying is actually inaccurate. If you study Arabic grammar, grammar and, the, and, and stylistics properly, there's a very good book by Professor Abdul Rauf from Leeds University. And he wrote a book called Arabic Stylistics. There's another book called Quranic Stylistics as well. And you'll be informed in this. And essentially, they used to have the orators doing rhyme prose before anyway. You have the soothsayer speech, which is called kahin, which is a form of rhyme prose. You had poetry, which you had the ukas fair, they used to debate in poetry and challenge people with regards to their skills and rhetorical devices and eloquence. So the form's already there. The point is, what the grammarians did, there was a source period of the Arabic language, which was a hundred years before, around a few hundred years before the Quran, a few hundred years after. And this was a source text period. The grammarians call this the source text period. Now, 
What they did was, for, for a grammatical rule or stylistic rule to be sound, it has to conform with pre-Islamic poetry and pre-Islamic oratory and post-Islamic. They had to all conform with each other. So it's not, the grammar wasn't formed just for the Quran's sake. So this requires obviously a bit more depth in understanding the development of the Arabic language and what Arabic language actually is. So the issue is, it has its own unique form. How is and it says, divine?